Hi everyone, I hope you're doing great. Okay, so this is an unusual broadcast, uh, unusual recording, uh, because I have been traveling for the past week and I haven't stopped yet. Uh, but there's something that is happening right now uh, that's trending all over Nigeria and beyond, which I said, you know what, I'm gonna have to lend my voice. I'm not gonna keep quiet, no matter how tight my schedule is, I have to say something about this because I've been trying to look at a few documents and research a little bit about this project uh, before the news broke, okay? Um, you must have seen the news that Buhari or the FEC, the Federal Executive Council of Nigeria, chaired by President Mohammed Buhari, have actually approved a whopping 1.9 billion US dollars to build a rail line stretching all the way from the northern part of Nigeria to Niger Republic. You know, when I saw that news, there was something that happened to me. I know people had different reactions to it and there have been a lot of speculations as well. But there was something specifically that happened to me because I had recently visited Eastern Nigeria. And during my visit, I saw the level of dilapidation that has taken place in that region. I saw how that there's so much, so much absence of the federal government in the entire region. What happened to the busiest economic route we have in Nigeria today? Anybody who knows about Nigeria, even if you don't live in Nigeria, you already know that the busiest economic route we have in Nigeria is between Western Nigeria and Eastern Nigeria, precisely between Lagos State and the Old Eastern Region and by Old Eastern Region, I mean what they call today the Southeast and South-South. Much of the containers you see cleared at the seaport in Lagos, almost 30 to 40% of them, if not 50, actually are Newi bound. Newi is a town in Anambra State, which is in Eastern Nigeria. All these containers are cleared in Lagos and they have to move by road to Newi. Buhari does not think there's any need for a real line to alleviate the suffering of these importers and these business people. Buhari does not think there's a need to put a real line that even if it's not carrying goods and services, let it even carry people. There's so much movement between Lagos and Eastern Nigeria. All the people from it, almost every single person who commits from Eastern Nigeria is a business person. That is what God has destined for Easterners. They are business people. They are importers. They are traders. There's no connection by rail to the hub. Nigeria's economic hub, Nigeria's commercial nerve center, Lagos where almost 70 to 80 to 90 percent of them do business there's no connection at all the buhari thinks it's okay to build a rail line from northern nigeria katsina ken all the way down to niger republic going through empty lands all the way down probably through the desert down to niger republic but the place where the rail line is needed the most, nobody is talking about it. And you ask yourself, why? So many, like I said earlier, there's been a lot of speculation. There's been a lot of speculation on what is really going on. But I'm going to help you to make sense of this because I don't believe in speculations. I believe in research. And I come out with facts and because I'm still traveling, uh, when I am finally settled, I'm going to give you a lot of other references to buttress the facts I'm about to share with you. So, several years ago, there was something that was called the Beijing Going Out Policy. Beijing, Beijing, China, Beijing Going Out Policy. A policy through which they wanted to really step out to externalize their dominance and their power and make themselves known around the world. As a global power when Xi Jinping came to power it was renamed the Belt and Road Initiative so Belt and Road is nothing but just 
connecting all the regions that China is already dominating by road using ordinary overland road and the rail lines to connect them and they're using sea transportation as well to connect all these regions. It was initially meant to be for the Asian countries and all those East Asia and the rest of them, connecting all of them to China because China wants to exert a lot of influence on these places. But of course, it was extended to Africa. And as I speak to you right now, more than 40 nations in Africa have signed up to the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative. In fact, Nigeria signed up to the Belt and Road Initiative in 2018. So Nigeria is a signed member of the Chinese BRI. And for those of you who do not know, you, you have seen the celebrated standard gauge rail line that was built from Kaduna to Abuja and the one that was the metro rail that was built within the Abuja metropolis. Do you know that all of these projects were actually sponsored by the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative funding? Do you know that that was where the money for all these things came from? The Chinese Belt and Road Initiative is basically happening in regions where China has systematically taken over the countries or the nations. China does not go to where they don't take over. They don't give you anything for nothing. When China gives you loan, which is a fiat, not backed by any commodity, what they are doing is that they are making you to, they're making you to fall into their trap. They give you raw cash. Useless pieces of paper that you can print on your own. They give it to you. You collect it because African leaders are so foolish and hopeless. They collect it and they give up the commodities that should, the monies that they are receiving from China should have been backed with. So you take ordinary paper, which is like air, and you take resources, natural resources, tangibilities, and you give them over to China. And this is how China is taking over Africa little by little by little by little to the point that they got to a point where they said, you know what? Our investment in Africa has really gotten so much. You know, China actually built the AU headquarters, African Union headquarters, as if we can do it ourselves. So China is the biggest investor in Africa today. So they felt like, you know what? We have put so much in Africa. I think it's time we begin to connect all our territories. Let's begin to connect them or using the Belt and Road Initiative to connect all of them to all our power control spots in Africa. And where is one of those power structures that they have in Africa? The naval base that China built in Djibouti, the Horn of Africa. Are you aware? Google it. China built a naval base in the Horn of Africa, in Djibouti. And after building it, what did they do next? Using the Belt and Road Initiative, BRI, and you can look this up. China immediately created a rail line that ran from Djibouti to Ethiopia. And check your African map. You're going to see that from Ethiopia, the next thing you're going to see down there is Kenya. And then you're going to see Uganda. And then you're going to see DRC, the Democratic Republic of Congo. The spot that has the largest deposit of natural resources on earth. That is DRC. So China has already connected by rail Djibouti and Ethiopia. And then started pressing on the Kenyan government and Uganda to accept for a rail line to move from Kenya to Uganda. And so what they are trying to do is from their control grid in Djibouti where they have their naval base, they will now be able to access Ethiopia, access Kenya, straight into Uganda and boom, straight into DRC, the home of natural resources. So from the East African flank, China is busy connecting the territories so that you are not only within their economic reach, you are also within their naval and military reach in case of any intervention that may be needed. And the West African coast, Buhari is helping them to make that same connection happen. Why Niger Republic? If you go to the uh, BRI index or BRI map, the Belt and Road Initiative map, you will see that Niger is marked as null, N-U-L-L. -L. In other words, Niger 
does not have a signed memorandum of understanding that makes it a part of the Chinese BRI. Okay, the Russian Federation has nothing to do with that as well. They are marked as null. But why is it that Niger is marked as null, but they are building a rail line from Nigeria to Niger with Chinese loan? So China has given money to Nigeria and mandated Nigeria to use it to propagate the Chinese expansionist program in the continent, on the continent of Africa. So they're using Chinese loan they received on our behalf, on behalf of every Nigerian. It didn't come as just to build that road. It came as a loan. To build a road that connects, a rail that connects Nigeria with Niger, even though Niger is marked as null, is not a signed member of the BRI initiative. You know why? China has more influence and more presence in Niger 10,000 times more presence in Niger than they have in Nigeria. Niger is like a tiny mini micro territory of China. They almost literally own the nation of 60 million plus. China built the biggest refinery in that country and run all the pipes that go to the refinery. China literally controls everything in Niger, controls the government, everything. If the Chinese government decides to shut down Niger Republic today, they will do it with their eyes closed. That's why they don't have to be on the BRI map. And yet, China is connecting Nigeria because they are going to interconnect all the territories. China has looked at the calculator. They have seen all the nations that owe them. They have seen all the amount of money they owe them. They have seen the indexes, the economic indexes and the capacity they have to pay back. They already know that most of these nations will not pay back. They've already calculated the kind of, the amount of resources they will take over from them, how that many aspects of government will be transferred over to them. They have already calculated the dominance they have weighed it and they have seen that this is real. It is feasible. It is clear that we are taking over these nations. So the next thing they have to do is to connect them through the Belt and Road Initiative. They've seen all of that. That's why members of the House of Representatives in Nigeria uncovered several weeks or months ago that there was certain clause they found in the loan documents in Nigeria, the loan that they took from China, they found clauses in the document, the loan document, that implied that China could actually, under certain circumstances, take over Nigeria in the nearest future. China has calculated all of this. They have seen that it is real, and so they know. That's why they are connecting their territories. They plan several years ahead. The program is supposed to come into full fruition by 2049. That is the program. It's written in the document. They are planning for 2049 for total complete world dominance. And by then they believe Africa would have fallen for them completely. They will be the ones in China. This one, you remember the, the, the uh, what is the video or something that was trending recently where a Chinese guy was saying that Africans can't govern themselves. They, they don't have the capacity to govern themselves. So China should take over. He's not talking just, it's not his personal opinion. It is something, he's speaking based on the knowledge he has that China is actually in the process of taking over Africa. This is what is going on. And so when they come to a particular region, they play on certain sentiments so that they will be able to achieve their aim. In the West African region where you have Muslim states like Chad and Niger and all these places, they are playing on the religious sentiments. The playing on the religious sentiment isn't that why a Chinese man was turbaned recently in northern Nigeria. They're playing on religious sentiment because Buhari, of course, will love to unite with his brothers in Niger. They will want to connect with Chad. They will want to do all these connections. And so China will play on that and say, yes, we can help you to do that. But they forget that China, after using you, when they eventually take over, you know what is going to happen? They will treat you just like they treat most of these Muslims that they came out in the news recently, they were castrating them and sterilizing their women. China does not respect any other religion. They are very agnostic. China doesn't care about real religion. They, they, they don't believe in your religion. Muslim, Christian, they don't believe in your religion. 
So when they have taken over, they're going to do away with your Islam. The right now, because we have leaders who don't use their brains, we have leaders who are not capable of even leading a home, let alone a local government to think of now a whole nation. Because we have these people, things are going wrong before our eyes. When I saw that the Federal Executive Council sat down and dealt on this and approved it, I said to myself, we have too many robber stamps in power today. The Buhari administration abhors independence. They love tyranny and brutality. That's why everybody is scared. Okay, you have Rotimia Mechi coming from Eastern Nigeria. Festus Kiyamo, Niger Delta, Eastern Nigeria as well. Sylvia, Timipre Sylvia, Chris and Gige, all from the East, Old Eastern region. All of them are sitting there cheering on Buhari. Meanwhile, go to their region and see the evil and see the level of decadence, economic isolation. We have been totally, completely economically emasculated in eastern Nigeria. You, I, go to the airport, they told us they were taking one whole year to repair, Enugu Airport. The only major international airport for people in eastern Nigeria. I have seen real-life pictures when I visited the Eastern Nigeria recently. I saw real-life pictures. If you come to the airport, it's as if they just started work there day before yesterday. God in heaven is my witness. But you shut the airport down for one whole year and told us you were working. The minister for aviation or whoever he is, go and see the type of building he built in his father's house. It's even bigger than two airports compared together. But look at the international airport that will serve millions of Easterners. They left it decayed, looking like a chicken house. And I'm sure they are doing all this in connivance with the stooge that calls himself the governor of Enugu State. I'm going to dedicate some more time to expose what that guy has done to Enugu State, the capital city of the home of my birth. I will, the next two, three, four, five, six weeks, I will be on this guy. Roads are not anywhere to be found. This is what is happening. This is what is happening. And you are building a real line internationally. But the international airport that will stop the... You know why they stopped? Do you know why they stopped the Enugu airport and said they, they need to take one year? It was not to repair anything. It was not for them to do any, any runway light or whatever. It was because they wanted to ensure that Ethiopian airlines stopped completely from landing there because when Buhari came to power, he was extremely irate, angry that Enugu now has an international airport that is functional and Ethiopia was landing there. They didn't like it, so they kept looking for what do we do, what do we do? They first of all messed up the place, used logistics and all kinds of nonsense to frustrate the airlines that were coming. It reduced from about two or three or four down to only Ethiopia. And they still didn't like it. They needed to stop Ethiopia from coming. All of a sudden, boom, we need to repair the runway. We need to do this. We need to do that. They shut it for one year. So that by the time they open it, it will be difficult for Ethiopia to start. Ethiopia has now been kicked out. Only local airplanes go there now. So they're happy. Nothing was done there. No single work was done there. Nothing. The place is worse than it was before. This is the wickedness that these demons in power in Asso Rock are meeting on the people. And you are busy approving uh, $1.9 billion to build a rail line that stretches from northern Nigeria to Niger Republic. You guys are doomed. You are destined for destruction. May God visit all of you one by one. These people are demonic. You are downright demonic. So, I stand with TUC, you know, every time I make these videos, I talk about the TUC, Trade Union Congress, the NLC, Nigerian Labor Congress, all of them have been like hopeless all these years. Since Buhari came to power, they all lost their voices. Under Jonathan, any little sleep, you saw them screaming, screaming. None of them have been talking. But I was pleasantly surprised recently when I saw in the news, I think it was a day yesterday, that they were now planning a protest or that they had even started a protest, I don't know. But if that is true, I stand with the TUC 
or NLC or whoever needs to challenge this madness. Nigerians came out of COVID-19 devastated beyond imagination, beyond comprehension. And the only way the Nigerian government, who never took care of its citizens during this trying moment, the only way they could actually welcome the people and help them to adjust to the new life of suffering was by increasing the suffering, by increasing the tariff of electricity and the petroleum pump price in the country. In a nation where people have only 30,000 naira, less than a hundred dollars as the minimum wage. And most of these people have more than 12 people depending on them. Tell me what else is the definition of hell if it is not natural. No, I want someone to prove to me that there is something more hellish than Nigeria. And you people sit down there, you keep quiet, you cheer him on because of the little cash they give you. You build mansions here, you travel abroad, you go and buy an estate or you buy a, an island or you just money that will die and you will die with the money very soon and you forget there are destinies that are wasting away that you can actually save and be blessed by God and most of these people surprisingly claim to be Christians it's unfortunate it's very very unfortunate and that's why I'm praying to God Almighty that your judgment is coming close I was thinking the other day, I said, who knows why the rail that they were building between Kenya and Uganda suddenly stopped abruptly. They said China withdrew their money. They couldn't continue with it. I, I, I pray and hope that it is America's intervention that led to because if that is the case, it's a welcome development. And that's what I'm praying for every day. And that's why I'm supporting Trump because I know he has a new plan for Africa. It's not a hearsay. It's not rumor. I am an insider to an extent. So I have seen, I know he has a powerful program for Africa. And I think it's scaring China to death. And if that program is allowed to see the, day, the light of the day, you will see that Africa will be so much better for it. It won't be all this nonsense we're going through from time. God will help us. I'm so angry in my spirit. But I also think that this anger needs to translate into something very constructive and productive. I think that all of us need to wake up. Hiding your heads and running under the table is not going to help anybody. What the TUC is doing now is exactly what should have been done all along. All of you who supported Buhari and brought him to power and imposed him on us, swallow your shame, come out and speak up. Yes, it has happened. Rise up, let's challenge this nonsense. At the end of the day, these loans that they are taking, they are taking it on behalf of you and I. The unborn generation will wake up one day and begin to speak China. And China will say, you don't have any right to do this, you don't have any right. How? What happened? Well, this is it. It was uh, It's like an ancestral curse. Your ancestors, they did all kinds of nonsense, entered into agreement with Satan, and then you woke up two generations later, and you are suffering rubbish that you don't even know when it was signed. It's an ancestral curse. That's what Buhari is taking us through now. We are being cursed ancestrally we took by China. And tomorrow we wake up, we will know what, what is happening to us. We are saying it now. We can stop it now. And that's the best time to stop it. If only we can unite. If only we can unite. Go out on the international scene. Everywhere you go. People are rumoring that Nigeria is about to break up. And truly, there's no way a nation can survive in the way that Nigeria is doing. It's a no-brainer. It's a no-brainer. So if you think that Buhari is doing this because he wants to unite the North with his, their, their kids and kids and Chad and Niger, no, that, they want to carry all of us from the South with them as they are united. Remember that when Nigeria was amalgamated, when they brought the Northern Protectorate and the Southern Protectorate together, the first sign of the amalgamation was using a road network to connect the North and the South. And that's what they're doing now because they want to bond Niger and Chad and Nigeria and call them one block. They will become like one nation. This is what is coming. China is doing all of this and the people from the other religious aisle will begin to say, yes, we are winning. But you don't know all of this is done for China's own benefit. 
They are using our brain. That's why people say Africans are not developed. They will tickle you from the angle of religion, you will fall. They will tickle you from ethnicity, you will fall. They will tickle you from culture, you will fall. Leave all of this behind and fight for the survival and preservation of who you are as an African. Chinese man doesn't believe in your religion, but if he wants to kill you, he will come and follow you to church. He will even take your turban, do everything they want to do. But they don't believe in your religion. When they take over, they will wipe you and your religion off. Why? We so, why are we so, so lenient? Why are we the way we are? We are so weak minded and weak. -willed. We are so unintelligent and ignorant. May God help Africans. May God help us. We need to rise up, people. What you see unfolding right now is dangerous. And Buhari has gotten to a point where he believes that he can just do anything and get away with it, and nobody will do him anything. Nigerians don't rise up now and challenge this, worse will happen. And I pray it doesn't happen that way. May God help us.